Definitely a fan favorite, and it gets this team riled up as well. This is going to be a fun matchup. Guard play galore on both sides, and whether it's Queen or whether it's Rideau, this is going to be probably one of the best matchups we've seen in a tournament full of incredible matchups. Order Corchea jumping center along with Durr. It's won by Durr. Here's Rideau. Rideau gets by Buchanan. Good feet inside and a flush right off the get-go by Michael Durr. He wins the tap and wins the slam. <laughs> Another great feed from Rideau. That's exactly what we talked about. One of the top assisters in the entire country. One of three players last year with 100 assists and 100 steals throughout the course of the regular season. He can do it on both ends of the floor. Aggies now with the ball, the other way in their road black uniforms. Aura Koachea misses, Durr with the rebound. Kind of like the physicality from Durr there, not backing down from Aura Koachea underneath. Aura Koachea on the defense, Durr on the offense, and Aura Koachea gets a rebound. You know, Trying to say that twice. Yeah, exactly. And it, it's. Obvious early on, South Florida, led by Brian Gregory, really making it a point to get it down low to Durr. They think they have a physicality advantage down low. Buchanan on Dawson. Queen had it. Now on the three ball is Bobbitt, and Bobbitt hits. Good ball movement by New Mexico State to get that three. We talked about Bobbitt in the open, and... He plays like a stretch four. He can knock that down. Yesterday had a solid look from the outside. He's not afraid to pull the trigger. That time he does so and he knocks it down from long range. It's a good way to get on the board first. Kick it inside. Double team. Shot put up by Durno. Dur strip. Taken away by Buchanan with the quick hands. Here come the Aggies. Third straight possession. They tried to get it to Durr. Queen for three. That's short. South Florida coming right back. Rideau. Rideau cuts down the middle against Aore Coach and scores with the left hand. Just a good drive and a good finish. Too easy for Rideau on the left side of the lane. No backside help as he lost Buchanan in the shuffle. Buchanan got caught behind his own man and Aracoachea right on the low block. And because of that, it was a wide open lane. Right in the middle for Rideau. Bobby with the ball. Buchanan now with it. Aure oh. Kurchea with the ball. They got it back. Here's Bobbitt. Bobbitt with the black headband today. Buchanan on the drive. Shot clock going down. They feed it out. Here's a three ball that will be off the mark. Brown took it, but the rebound is stuck back. Good play there by Bobbitt. And Bobbitt, he's up, and his team is up by one, five to four. Bobbitt crashing in for the board and then able to put it back just in the right position at the right time. You got to do a better job of boxing out if you're USF. And layup try is no good. Offensive foul anyway. I'd be interested to take another look at this. Here it is, and I don't know how that was an offensive foul. No feet set. All the way through, I think Terrell Brown got a benefit of a call that time. I think that really could have been a blocking foul. One of the few misses we've seen from a very well-officiated tournament throughout the first two days so far. Lots of contact on both sides, but I think with the feet moving, you got to call a blocking foul. Queen fed it out top to Brown. Buchanan with the shot clock down. Here's Brown. Brown has to hurry. He's got three. Orecoche had it stolen away from him. Good defense by Anton Mars Marisevic. Marisevic got it, and here's Rideau with a three. And that was a bomb by Rideau. You can see that look in his eyes. Rideau from downtown. Doesn't matter how far out it is. He is ready to pull the trigger, and that time he drains it putting South Florida back up on top. Foul called. That's going to be a defensive foul, and that's going to be a media timeout here. New Mexico State 
As the score is seven to five here, you look at Chris Jans talking with his team. And Jans, we mentioned it yesterday, Kyle, an outstanding coach and outstanding teacher. Yeah, and a 61 and 14 record in his time with New Mexico State. They were 20, 27 and three inside WAC play, and that's pretty impressive. He's undefeated in his tenure in the WAC conference tournament, two straight tournament titles, two straight NCAA tournament appearances. And he's now 6-2 in these preseason tournaments with New Mexico State. He has really turned around that Aggie program and uh, done a really nice job and kind of emerged as one of the better coaches on the, at least in the uh, mid-major side of college basketball. Aure Corchea at the line. And he can't get it on the first. I like how active Ari Colchea has been today. Pure physicality in the lane. They call him the Spaniard. He's able you to train that, that one. I love that. I think that's impressive. Anytime you can take on the name of your nationality, then you're doing something right. You're the Spaniard. That's like being called the American. I would take that 100 times. <laughs> Near steal by Queen. Still with the ball. Dawson. Rideau. Don't leave him alone or you'll pay. Down to seven. Justin Brown. Nice little cut in the lane. A left-hander is short on the ground. Medersevich tries to get it. He does. It goes on the base and out of bounds to New Mexico State as Dawson couldn't control. Yeah, just out of control all the way through. It seemed like that ball never got above the waistline of anybody on that South Florida offense. And because of that, if you're skipping it around underneath your teammates, it's going to be even tougher to reel in. And that time, just off of the hands of Dawson and out of bounds. Couldn't handle the hot pass. Aore Koachea on the post up, a little hook too strong to the left. And that'll be South Florida ball. Seems like neither side has really found a rhythm yet. New Mexico State, two of six from the field, and South Florida has turned it over a total of three times already. This is not necessarily an offensive bout so far. We're almost, or we're past the five minute mark here in the first half, and neither side has really found any kind of rhythm on offense. Rideau on the drive now, ran over a man, offensive foul. He did strong take going in, welcoming the contact and throwing it off the glass. Three on the way by Trevlin. Queen is off the mark, and here comes South Florida. Dawson to the basket, little short. Long rebound, chase down. Boy, that's great hustle by Sean Williams. Yeah, Williams just... brings it into the front court. McCants all the way to the basket. Missed the bunny and a foul on New Mexico State. McCants, you look at his face, he knows he did not do what he wanted to do. Time out on the court, 11.30 to play. Five-point lead, South Florida on Flow Sports. Rebounding well, out-rebounding. New Mexico State, nine to four. Seven of those nine coming on the defensive side and snuffing out a lot of those different rebounds and what could turn into possessions for New Mexico State. And that's why South Florida has been able to build an early lead. Rashan Williams out there now, along with Collins, Rideau. Castaneda with the ball now. Durr is out there. Three is on the way. Durr trying to fight for the rebound, and he is fouled on the play. That's just good tenacity by Durr, keeping good position in the lane. Yeah, they're going to call that on Terrell Brown. Just kind of got locked up there. As you see, Brian Gregory not happy with the call. Thought it could have gone both ways. On the right wing, Castaneda with the three. McCants got the rebound. New Mexico State with the ball. They are down 14 to nine. 
Sean Williams out of Little Rock, Arkansas, a junior. McCants, he's a good post-up player, tried to pass it in to Rice, and it was kicked. But before the kick, they call a foul. So foul is called on South Florida. South Florida with the lead. Rice. Screen out by William McNair, a redshirt freshman out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, number 24, first appearance. Here's Sean Williams. Now McCants for three. Got it. He hit his first yesterday. He hit his first today. What happened in between yesterday, that's another story. Hopefully <laughs> for him, he can keep hop, but he made his first. Yeah, he made the first one yesterday, like you said, but then he missed his next two tries from beyond the arc. This time, has that confidence again, straight away lines it up, and then knocks it down. And that one is a miss. Here comes McCants. Bad pass. It was tapped out of bounds, but it went off of David Collins. It remains Aggie ball. That is what makes this South Florida defense so stingy. They disrupt passing lanes better than really the majority of the country. Whether it's Collins or Rito and even Castaneda, they will jump in front of the pass and knock it away, and they don't even have to really get a good hand on it. As long as they get a fingertip or two, should be able to jar that one loose and potentially send it to another white jersey. And one. Buchanan taking it all the way. The man out of Durant, Mississippi, six foot 170. Look at this. Wow, that is an impressive play, splitting the defenders, and he says, hey, cash it. And one, and the thing that was a little off camera, following the play, Buchanan turns around, and he goes directly to the half court line and is coaching up Will McNair. That's what a senior leader does. That's exactly what Buchanan is, leads the team, an assist per game, he helps out his teammates, and then whenever he needs to take it himself, he will. It's one of the reasons why he's got a couple points per game, but he's really about the team aspect of it all, and he sh showed it there. And look at this. All of a sudden, the Aggies with a one-point lead over South Florida. We have a whistle and a South Florida player shaking up. Xavier Castaneda. Yeah, Castaneda. Fall or fell earlier, it looked like he rolled up an ankle, trying to get back up and get in the middle of the play, but he was hobbling on one leg, so the official on the far side decided to call time. Now he can put some pressure on it. As you see it there, right into the left of your screen, right back behind Terrell Brown, but he stays in the ball game. Collins on Brown, a three ball off the mark. That is a tough rebound by McCants, who can do that all night. Collins thought he got nicked in the arm, thought it could have been a foul call, and a couple free throws. Buchanan, feet inside, a little hook. William McNair wide open. I love the pass from Sean Buchanan right there, threading the defense, putting it right into the hands of his big man. That was an impressive feed. He stayed with the ball up over his left shoulder, and then just catapulted it right into the hands of Will McNair. Taking another look at it. Look at this ball go straight through the defense in a couple white jerseys. And that set up the big man for success. And McNair, all he had to do was just kiss it off the glass and put it in the bottom of the net. Wow, who was that? Brett Favre? Yeah, that was an impressive pass. Looked like a quarterback weaving through the defense. I like it. Let's talk about the way the Aggies are playing. All of a sudden, they're up by three. Just a moment ago, it was a five-point deficit, and they looked like they were kind of climbing uphill. But right now, they're kind of at the top of the mountain looking down. But this is going to be a back-and-forth game, I think. Yeah, that's what an 11-2 run will do. They've held South Florida scoreless for the past three minutes and three seconds. The Bulls just one of seven in their last seven attempts. Trailing by three and talked about it earlier. The two teams that came from different directions in their game yesterday. South Florida quickly was down to Loyola, eight to nothing right at the beginning of that one. And then turning back around and they finished off the comeback, whereas New Mexico State was up by as much as 16 against Colorado State. Ended up taking overtime to get them here to the semifinal, but 
they actually closed the deal in OT. Castaneda feeds Rideau. Rideau on Rice, a good defender. This is Brown. That's a two ball, and it's off the mark, and Rice going to get the rebound. McCants looking in. We'll see what the Aggies do here on offense. They prefer to run, but they're a good setup team as well. Here's McCants with 12 to shoot. Brown with a triple. Got it! Terrell Brown from downtown. He knew it was good as soon as it left his fingertips. He felt it coming around a screen, used a pick right up at the top of the key. Had about two steps on his defenders, caught the pass from Buchanan, another big assist from the senior leader, and then drained it from deep. Good feed inside, throwing it down, Michael Durr. A little bit of an exclamation point from Durr. Just a second bucket of the game, but he's had some open looks. They continue to try and feed the rock to him down low. Fun game here so far. Don't expect that to change anytime soon either. And there's another bucket for New Mexico State this time. It's Johnny McCants. One of these teams playing for a trophy tomorrow. You can see the intensity, even as early as it is, still plenty of game to play. Dawson gets it in, and they score the bucket. Love the ball movement there from the Bulls. Did not let up, kept the foot on the gas, and because of that, able to drive around and kind of work that New Mexico State defense open. Good fee, but unable to finish. McNair was knocked away from him out of bounds. That was a massive block from Durr coming from behind and surprising McNair. McNair didn't even know Burr, Brown was, or Durr, excuse me, was even there. And Durr comes in with a rejection. South Florida still trailing by four here from the Cayman Islands as they continue to make a run. Durr having a great game, though. Just in eight minutes, he's got four points, four rebounds, and a block. That last block was as emphatic as they come. That's what sets us up on the baseline. Well, he's one of those guys, you see him in your screen, just making things happen and forcing the opponent to make things happen and making it tough on him. Shot clock down to four. Rice outside. Has to hurry. Tried to get it to Aorikoechea, and it's a 30-second shot clock violation. You know, the Aggies had some trouble with that yesterday, Kyle, as a lot of times we would hear the crowd saying 5-4-3-2-1, and that's one of the teams that goes late into the clock in their set offense. Yeah, normally you don't see that in coming out of a timeout especially, and even some confusion here on the defensive end. It looked like Rice just didn't see the clock, and then he had some trouble after talking to the coaches as well. Yeah, once he realized what the clock was, the defense really clamped it down on him. Chris Jans is livid right out in front of his bench. That He might not have liked what we were seeing. No. He walked away. I don't <laughs> see that right now. He is, uh, he is not happy with his squad. Lots of confusion coming out of the timeout, not executing the way that they're normally used to executing. Free throw miss, 22 to 19. Free throw make, excuse me. 22 to 19, Castaneda, one more coming. And makes them both. So it's a two point lead. Have a loud fan base for both teams, I like it. Yeah, South Florida brings the, the juice in terms of the intensity in the fan base. Saw a couple Bulls faithful in the building. Here's Williams for three off the side of the rim and the rebound grabbed by South Florida. Dawson the other way. Collins couldn't get that triple. New Mexico State with the ball. C.J. Bobbitt got the rebound. We haven't called his name a lot here today so far. 
No, and he didn't really have the best game yesterday either. You expected him to really touch the ball a lot and really be in the thick of things, but he's been more of an assisting role today. Saw that yesterday whenever his shots just didn't fall early. Ore Koche gives the ball to Williams. Rice for three. Another big rebound by Dirk. I love the rotation from South Florida during that possession. It didn't matter who had the ball for New Mexico State. They had a Bulls player right in their face. Here comes Williams on a steal, a two-on-two. Two. He's going to take it all the way himself and scores. Coast to coast for Williams. New Mexico State now with a dozen points in the paint. Backing off that low block. Nice job by Williams off balance. He's tied for the team lead with five points to his total. Coaches really barking out instructions here. Three ball, Castaneda off the mark and the rebound grabbed by Rice. He traveled. At first, it looked like it was going to be a foul. They called a walk. Yeah, lots of contact there, and he fell to the floor, and that's when he was called for the travel. A rash of substitutions on both sides before the inbound pass. Still a 12-0 advantage for bench points in favor of New Mexico State so far. Here comes South Florida now with the ball. Down by four. 4.08 to play, shot clock to 16. Good movement. They get it to Castaneda. Too strong on the triple and the loose ball foul. That's an easy one to call as that will go against Jameer Chaplin. Chaplin out of Norcross, Georgia. He's a freshman, 6'5", 170. And all of a sudden, they found a bevy of turnovers, 20 against Loyola Chicago in the second half of that win. Shot in the corner by Bobbitt, trying to get on track here, couldn't do it. And a rebound, Castaneda, 24 to 20 in favor of New Mexico State, down to 340 on the clock. Both teams, because of the defense of the other, needing to be patient here. Jameer Chaplin. It's not quite the pace that we saw in that Loyola and Colorado State game earlier. Loose ball foul is going to be called on South Florida. Not liking to call Jameer Chaplin, but he was out of position. Yeah, if you're out of position, you're going to get called for that the majority of the time. And because be of that, the bonus now in favor of New Mexico State. Let's see what they can do free throw wise. Two of three so far yesterday in the matchup with Colorado State. And they definitely took advantage of free throws. 14 of 16 from the line for the Aggies. Taking the freebies and taking advantage. Couldn't take advantage there. The miss by Williams and a rebound South Florida. So it's like it never happened right there. And back come the Bulls. We'll see what they can do right here. Castaneda on a double team. Collins. Castaneda pulling up. Marasevich got the rebound. He is tied up, and that's going to be a hell ball. Good defense by Buchanan. And the arrow going the way of the Aggies. And Buchanan really feeling it as you see it on your screen there. He was just jumping around. We're in the wrong country, but he looked like a kangaroo there. <laughs> There were I wish I had hops like that. 100%, but <laughs> there was a lot of grabbing there. He thought he was fouled, and I could see what case he has there, but that New Mexico State defense was pestering all possession long. They were all over the place. The zone worked out well for the Aggies, and it ends up in that jump ball. Sean Buchanan out of Durant, Mississippi. Just methodical in the lane, tied up, 
Has to get out of lane and did. He gets a give and go, lays it up short. Oricoche tried to get the rebound and McCants does and scores. Johnny McCants out of Oñate High School in Las Cruces, New Mexico, was an outstanding high school player and he's getting it done here. As you look at the fight, he finally got the ball maneuvered and put it back. Foul call on the floor was up and good. Now, Brian Gregory is really having his way with the officials on that baseline, and now they're talking things over with Chris Jans. Yeah, Eric Curry talking with Chris Jans, John Higgins, Eric Curry, and Tony Green, the officiating crew. So no basket, or is it going to be a basket? No, I think they're going to say no basket. Well, he... He oh. said no basket. He said wave it off, but then he pointed like put it down. So a little confusing there. Now you're saying yes, Baxter. I think he's saying no foul on the play, so but they thought at the bench and at the scorer's table, they meant no basket. They didn't put it on the board, but now they do. And it's 26 to 20. Very interesting turn of events there. And now... On the other end, you've got a push off the ball. David Collins called for the foul. And with all the confusion, South Florida really needs to gather themselves. Collins pulled out of the game. That's his second personal. A little early to be getting in the two or three range, and they're going to need him in the second half. They're going to remain in this ball game, so they take him out just for safe measure. Pass in the corner. McCants for three. He is two for two from three-point range. That's another selfless setup. Rashawn Buchanan had an open lane to the bucket really easily. Could have taken the shot himself. Now he turns it over the other end. Buchanan on another steal. Will come the other way for New Mexico State. 29 to 20, down to a minute and a half. McCants feeling it. Here's Williams, long range. That is off the mark. Metasevich got the rebound for South Florida, and the Bulls will come back. Here's Castaneda on the wing. Long range three, that is off the mark. Taking that was Justin Brown from downtown. Couldn't get it, Buchanan the other way with 53 seconds. And it's stripped away, Metasevich got it. And we've seen defense galore in this ball game for both sides. It's kind of what we expected going in. We thought the guards would have a little bit more success than they've had, but these defenses are having a heyday. 38 seconds, Metasevich inside, and Travel is going to be called. The referee on the baseline was about to call a foul, <laughs> right. but that was the right call. The yep. referee on the near sideline saw the feet moving a little bit for Maricevic, and because of that, the travel called prior to what would have been the foul, and it's going to be New Mexico State ball following a quick 30-second timeout. Good amount of the second unit in the ball game for New Mexico State right now. Aggies with the ball. Terrell Brown out of Hayward, California. McCants. Game clock down to 18. Jabari Rice. Dawson on Rice. Game clock is down to 10 as it counts down. Rice. Gets free for a three. Got it. <laughs> Steaming rice again. And there's a buzzer beater just missed as they stole the ball, threw it up, and that is the end of a good first half for New Mexico State. They are up by 12 here at halftime. Yeah, this is a fun back and forth ball game, really, from the get go. And South Florida was the one that came out on top, at least at the moment, or at least at the beginning. 
of the half with Durr down low. They really allowed him to, to have some freedom and attack, but then all of a sudden, New Mexico State kind of clamped down after a solid run from Rito and that entire South Florida offense, but it was the bench that paid the dividends for New Mexico State. 20 to nothing bench advantage points-wise between the Aggies and the Bulls. The Bulls had their starters trying to do as much as they could. Five points from Dawson, five points from Rideau, and then only the four points from Collins, but it was the New Mexico State bench, and then the three ball that really paid dividends again for the Aggies, six of 13 from the field, 46% from behind the arc, and it was a, a fun matchup for New Mexico State. South Florida frustrated on a multitude of occasions because of this New Mexico State squad, and they ended it off with a bang as well. Jabari Rice at the end of the half, putting his uh, hometown James Harden impression on. He's a Houston, Texas, Houston, Texas native. Well, he was uh, able to put down the step back three as time expired to give it a 12 point lead for the Aggies. Look in the middle right there, Johnny McCants, 10 points, five rebounds, one assist and one steal. Point wise to lead the way and those 10 points, two were on three balls. Yeah, he really found the rhythm from behind the arc and wasn't necessarily a big factor down low scoring because like you said, the majority of his scorings come from the perimeter, however, he has been a factor rebounding, five rebounds tied with Durr for the lead in the ball game. And so if you're South Florida, your identity has been faced around forcing turnovers. They've only forced five. New Mexico State has taken care of the rock today. Now they forced 20 turnovers in the second half yesterday against Loyola Chicago in a come from behind win. Well, this is the biggest lead of the day so far for New Mexico State at a dozen points. Can South Florida come back again from a double-digit deficit? We'll get the answer here in the next 20 minutes. Rideau has the ball. Rideau on the drive. Good start for South Florida. Rideau puts it down. And Rideau with seven points now. Only played five minutes in that first half. Not exactly sure why, but he turns back around and... He's on the floor to start the second half, and all of a sudden, they give it right to him and allow him to do work in the paint. Good feed to Rice, who missed, but he taps it back. Wow. Jamari Rice. Rice has really turned into quite the player for New Mexico State. He is all over the floor, whether it be from beyond the arc or even in the low block, boxing out and putting the put back down. Aggie shooting 46.5% right now to 34 and a half and there's a near steal by Rice. High pass, Collins got it, Rideau on the crossover. They feed it on the left base. Three ball is put up by South Florida. The miss by Justin Brown and here comes Bobbitt, the fellow number 13. Down to Aori Koachea, he had a block. Durr said not my house and it goes out of bounds to South Florida but Durr the blocking machine once again for South Florida. That is his first. I thought he had one earlier. That's his second block of the day. Oh, now they updated. I was looking at the stats. They didn't up, update yet. So, yeah, yes, he gotta, does have two. Got to go with your first instinct there, Scott. Yeah, I thought he had two, and he does have two. Two emphatic ones as well. Everything about that guy is emphatic, if you think about it. Absolutely. Plays with a fire. We talked about it yesterday. Aurecochea had it blocked at the last moment. They're going to count the bucket. And they're going to give him the foul as well. I saw him say that it was a bucket, but Eric Curry saying it's two free throws, so we'll see if they change here. I don't think they gave him the bucket. So just two shots. I was looking at the official underneath the bucket, and he kind of gave the motion like count the basket as if it was a goal temp, but then Eric Curry said no, two shots. Yeah, that's a right call ball was not in the rim or in the cylinder just yet before Durr came over and knocked it free. Almost as if the bucket counts though because Arako Ochova able to take advantage with the two free throws. Arako Ochoa with two points. Good drive in the lane by Collins. A little short tap by Arako Ochoa and he gets the board by way of his teammate. Here comes Buchanan the other way. The speedy one to Rice. Aurekochev fed Brown. 
Now they feed it in the corners. A shot put up and in by Bobbitt. Two ball by Bobbitt. Makes it a 16-point lead for New Mexico State. Largest deficit that South Florida has faced in the tournament thus far. They were down by 12 against Loyola Chicago yesterday. That was the biggest deficit up until this point. But a great job by Chris Jans in New Mexico State of putting his team in position here. And Rideau upset here after that last play as we take a look at the last bucket. Good feed by Aore Chan. A two ball was thrown up a beauty by Bobbitt. Yeah, Chris Jan's unhappy with his team on the positioning. He's not barking at the officials. He's barking at his team. Now, Brian Gregory, that might be another story, <laughs> but I know Chris Jan's was yelling at his team. Collins on the wing. Collins guarded by Terrell Brown, a good defender. Rideau. And they got the shot off late in a 30-second violation. That is outstanding defense by New Mexico State. Yeah, they've been clamped down on this South Florida attack toward the start of the second half. Aggie's starting to feel it here as they were up by 16 points. Ball comes right over here off of our monitor. I was wondering if we were going to get a ball on us. Yeah, I would rather have a ball than a player. <laughs> That's a little bit easier to, to deal with. And Over the course of my career, I've had both. <laughs> I've, had, uh, I've had a ball hit me before, but I have not had a player yet. I was looking down at the monitor. I would have made a grab if I was actually looking up. <laughs> right. <laughs> I was trying to provide some analysis, and I wasn't. I didn't have my my eye on the ball. Here's Rice. Rice to beat the buzzer. That just missed. Rebound, South Florida. Here's Brown for South Florida, giving the ball to Collins. Justin Brown from downtown. That is off the mark. Good rebound by C.J. Bobbitt. Buchanan with the left-handed dribble on the run. Aure Corchea. Bobbitt. He'll accelerate. Good hands, Rideau. And it goes out of bounds off of Rideau. Rideau on defense. He just kind of put his hand down like a hammer to knock that ball away. He knew right what he was doing and almost got the steal. Yeah, he's so crafty when it comes to the defensive hands. Third in the country in steals per game. Had four yesterday. That matches his average. And the Aggies get a bucket by Queen, who's been relatively quiet here today. In fact, that's his first points, and there's a collision right in front of us. <laughs> We've had a ball off the monitor and a train wreck right in front of us <laughs> in the course of a minute. That time, it looked like Rice was just trying to go through the screen and uh, exploded through the screen is the, the better way to say it. So he's going to check out. A little shaken up on the play as they continue to wipe the four clean. This has got to be frustrating for South Florida. Just the one basket here in the second half. An 18-4 run for New Mexico State. And it's really because of the defensive success. Faded inside for the slam as that was a beauty. As throwing it down was Durr. So Durr's been doing it on defense, and he gets a gift, a slam dunk. Absolutely a gift, and you got to love what Durr brings to the table size-wise for South Florida. And I say gift because that's his payment for his hard work, not <laughs> that it just fell in his lap. Yeah, he's been working down low all day long. Queen, a little runner. That's off the mark. He altered that shot as well. Came over. Queen had to try and soft touch it and didn't have a good handle. Rideau for two. South Florida will get another chance. Dawson on the run. And Dawson will go to the line. 
some of the campuses that these schools come from, but they do a nice job there. You see, there's a great look at it. We've got a packed house here and a very loud and intelligent crowd is the best way to put it. They know what's going on, and they're ready to let their voices be heard. Look yeah, at that shot. Great look at that. And on our side, we have Aggies and South Florida Bulls fans. So just about a packed house indeed as Dawson can't get the free throw. South Florida at the line, two of three now. That was the first miss, and he's taken all three free throws. South Florida, a team that lives and dies by the three. Well, right now, they're having some troubles. Two of 12 from downtown. That's just 16 percent yeah the Aggies six of 14 42.9 percent South Florida down by 15 lots of time 15 minutes to play here in the second half but they have to get some stops and get some points Johnny McCann's and we're gonna get a foul away from the ball as number five getting the foul for South Florida Rashun Williams I think Williams just came with a head of steam and his momentum carried him right into the body of Terrell Brown. Brown did a nice job of selling the foul, but officials are going to call that every time. Another foul is going to be called here. Chris Jans. Unhappy. Brian Gregory, on the other hand, this time he is happy. Foul, obviously, on New Mexico State. So a 15-point ball game. If you're South Florida, do you keep going on the outside? Do you try poking it inside? I think you still got to go with what your team identity has been. Try and get those threes to fall. The can lid can't stay on the rim the entire time, right? You wouldn't think so. At least they hope not. Rideau on the runner needed a bounce, didn't get it. He gets his own board, though. Dawson is fouled. Queen with the foul. Queen has really struggled in this game. He's been the leader with two of the leaders scoring-wise out of the lineup for the Aggies. Trevlin Queen has been the leader, but a lid's been on the hoop for him, it seems. Although He's only he played. hasn't had a lot of opportunities, just one bucket here today. Yeah, he's also been in foul trouble. That's why he's on the bench at the moment. Only played 10 minutes because he's had those three fouls against him for a good amount of time. You can't put up three fouls in 10 minutes, and it's going to take one of your best players off the floor. The encouraging thing for New Mexico State is that without Queen on the floor, they're still... Continuing to lead it by 13. That lead has shrunk just a little bit in the last couple of moments for South Florida, but New Mexico State continues to do a nice job. Brown to Rice. Rice can heat up in a hurry. Williams gives the ball back to Brown. Aore Coachea. He drives on Durr. Nice hook. Look at that. Talked about the old school big man play in the first game of the day. How about that? Turn it around and sinking it. That was old school itself, Scott. Yes, it was. And that was against the guy who has been a terror on defense, Durr. Rideau. Collins on the drive. Good runner off the glass. High percentage look. He thought about taking the three from the corner, but instead decided to attack the hoop, went with the left hand and kissed it right off the glass. High percentage look. He thought about taking the three from the corner, but instead decided to attack the hoop, went with the left hand and kissed it right off the glass. Aure Coach inside against Durr, fouled by Durr. The man they called the Spaniard deciding to go to work here, Kyle. He went down low and was physical. Drew the contact from Durr. Durr only with a second personal foul. And as physical as those two have been, it's surprising that there's only three fouls combined between the two of them. As they have been back and forth all day long. 
Two athletic bigs. That's what's so fun about that matchup is that they're both strong. They both have some agility as Durr checks out. Or each of its checks in and got to love what Durr brings to the table for South Florida. That time made it tough. Aori Corchea, no good on both of them in the rebound, South Florida. Still in it, down 42 to 29. Three ball, actually two ball by number two, and that is off to Marcus. Dawson couldn't get it down, and Rice the other way. McCants gave the ball to Williams. New Mexico State, not the kind of team that will take air out of the clock, so we'll see what they do. Here's Williams on the drive, tapped away. There was lots of contact, and it goes out of bounds off of New Mexico State. Buchanan back into the game for the Aggies. Brown will sit down. Buchanan, McCants, Aore Cochea, Rice, and Williams on the court for the New Mexico State Aggies. Buchanan with the highest plus minus out of anybody on that New Mexico squad. At a plus 13 look right now. Rideau for three straight away. Bingo, baby. We saw him get hot yesterday. His team is hoping he gets hot today. 10 point lead for New Mexico State, but don't sleep on the South Florida team. They've shown that they can come back prior. Already cut eight points off of what was once an 18 point deficit. You can sense South Florida starting to find a little bit of a feel here. Williams with seven, they have to hurry. McCants will take a three and that's short, his first miss. And the rebound is grabbed by number three. The guy just hit the three, Rideau. We'll see what he does here. He steps back, doesn't take the shot. I know he wanted to, though, but he didn't take it. Arisevic had it knocked away. Aureko Achea on the steal. And here comes Rice. Down the lane inside. They kick it back out to Rice. Oreko Echea, Marisevic on him. He's going to take him to school. No, he dishes it off. Buchanan, good hands by South Florida to knock it away. Buchanan kept it. Four on the shot clock. Here's Williams. He has to shoot. He does, and South Florida will bail them out right in front of us. Brian Gregory, very, and I mean very unhappy. Now that is inexcusable for South Florida. You know the clock is running down. I know you're taught to be defensive here. However, he got a little bit too close that time. Nice job by Williams drawing the foul. But now free throws to come for New Mexico State, leading by 10 here in the second half. Outstanding game to call here. Christopher O'Quinn, our director. Troy Guter, our producer. The crew doing a great job. And the teams on the court, Kyle, doing a great job. Yeah, and you kind of get that feeling that South Florida has a little bit of that momentum. A 5-0 run here for the Bulls. They've trimmed away at the lead. Now, these free throws don't necessarily help out. It looked like the Bulls had chalked up another stop against the Aggies offense. However, a nice job by Williams drawing the contact and then knocking down both three free throws. 44-32 in favor of New Mexico State. The lead is back to 12. Castaneda on offense. Watch out for this guy. Bad pass in the corner, though, and an unforced turnover by South Florida thrown by Rideau. Rideau looked confused, maybe some miscommunication, but looked like he threw it out of play regardless. I don't know how much Castaneda could have done to keep that one in bounds. Williams, he was corralled. Buchanan out top with eight to shoot. Once again, the shot clock, not the friend of the Aggies. Buchanan has to hurry to Williams. He'll force a three oh. and bury it. How's that about beating the shot clock? 
that's the second straight possession that Williams has just pulled out some points out of nowhere. The two free throws and the foul drawn on the last time down the floor, and this time a fadeaway shot clock buzzer beater. Five straight points for Williams. Quite a shot by Williams. Here comes Rideau trying to answer. It was going to be an and one. He hoped, but it was too hard. But Rideau will get a pair of free throws. You know, you love a guy who is a guard who can shoot as you look at this Williams three. Just hoisted it up at the buzzer and made it look easy. That's such awareness of the clock as well. Williams felt the presence of Rashawn Williams. Driving in on him, took that extra dribble, allowed him to step over to his left and really opened himself up with just that extra move. But knew, even with the small amount of time on the shot clock, that he had enough to get an open look. You got to really credit him for the veteran move. Rideau on the free throws, makes it 47 to 33. I was going to say, you got to like the way that Rideau, a guard, just takes over the game. Yeah, and he can take over a game. They may need him to. Him and Collins are really the, the go-to guys for the South Florida team, and there's Collins with the steal. Collins on the run. Collins all the way. High archer off the mark. McCants with the board. Here comes New Mexico State quickly. Williams another three. Other side. Bullseye. Talk about taking over Williams with eight straight points for New Mexico State. He has found fire for the Aggies. And the Aggie fans, even though there's 9-18, they are sensing making it to the finals of the Cayman Island Classic. We'll have more in a moment on Flow Sports. Fifty to thirty-three in favor of New Mexico State. We saw it going out the break. It's worth seeing again. The Sean Williams shows. He has <laughs> taken over here, and Sean Williams with the three-point baskets. And like you said, Kyle, he scored eight points here in the last minute. Yeah, eight straight points for Sean Williams. Like you said, the two from beyond the arc. He is really opened up the scoring now. Takes the team lead in the points category, three of five from deep. And we talked about the bench points really being the difference maker for New Mexico State so far, even more so now than when we noted it earlier. 30 bench points for the Aggies compared to zero for South Florida. If you have not been a starter for South Florida, you have not found your way into the uh, into the stat column. That's pretty sad, or just not exactly what South Florida really wants to do. You talk about the depth overall, and you would expect South Florida to find a rhythm in terms of at least somebody off of the bench, but Castaneda, Chaplin, Marshevich, and Williams have just not had any success finding the bottom of the net. Castaneda is the only one that's really put up multiple shot attempts. 0 of 4 from the field. Castaneda back in the ball game, by the way. He has the ball right now. So South Florida, still lots of time, so it's not panic time, but it's getting there. A 17 point lead for New Mexico State. Castaneda cuts. Good defense by the Aggies. And it's a steal right into the hands of Bobbitt. Here comes Buchanan. Turnover number 13 forced by New Mexico State. They've only turned it over a total of eight times on their end of the floor. One of the things that New Mexico State as a program, Chris Jans as a coach, takes pride in forcing turnovers. Once again, you hear the countdown. Buchanan had it swatted away. Bob, it comes out of nowhere, and his shot is short. That didn't touch anything, so a shot clock violation. Good hustle there from Bobbitt flying in out of nowhere to be able to 
at least get a hand on that and try to turn it toward goal. Durr on the outside. Rideau, little runner at the contact, no basket. It wouldn't have counted, but a good try by Rideau. Fouls on the floor against New Mexico State. Buchanan gets the foul. But New Mexico State, you get in this situation, Kyle, they're going to clamp down on a defense a lot more. And this is a very defensive-minded team already. Absolutely is. Williams for three, and he hits it. Rashun Williams all of a sudden comes out of nowhere to the sink one. 32 minutes of game action is how long it took for South Florida to get some bench production. Williams, the first player, not a starter for the Bulls to find the bottom of the net. Buchanan out top, 10 to shoot. Rice, open, fires, hits for three. Well, we've seen that skip a little bit this tournament. <laughs> It was in overtime yesterday, hit that buzzer beater before the halftime break, and then as the clock ticks down, Jabari Rice starts to find a little bit of that confidence. He has just got the clutch gene. Rideau with his team down and down big, 53-36. There's another near steal. It is taken away. Orico Che is tied up, and the arrow's pointing New Mexico State's way with 7.06 to play. Time out on the court. New Mexico State grinding it out right now as they are up 53-36. Cayman Islands Classic on. New Mexico State opening it up on South Florida here in the first semifinal of two on the day in the Cayman Islands Classic 2019. The bench points paying dividends of plus 30 in that column for the Aggies, and they continue to put up some three-point land opportunities as well, shooting 50% from the field. And, Scott, they're holding this South Florida offense to just 33% from the field. It doesn't surprise me being familiar with what Chris Jans likes to do with the defense, but it's impressive to watch it in person against a very talented South Florida team. This is no slots we're watching. Buchanan out top. Down to six. They have to hurry the shot. They do in the corner. It's missed. Aure Coche goes up to get the rebound. It's blocked by Durr, but taken by Rice. And a whistle away from the ball. It looks like we have a foul on the Aggies. Eric Curry emphatically calling the play right there. I'm not exactly sure where the foul was committed in the paint. I think it was against Williams away from the play. A break for South Florida, though. Bulls have not found the bottom of the net in the past minute and 32 seconds. And each one of those seconds that ticks off the clock now is crucial. Backing in is Durr, hook shot, a little too strong. Ore Koachea gets the rebound. He was going to make sure he got that all the way, and there's a shot, and that is good. Queen finally gets one. As Queen's been cold here today, he hasn't really gotten a lot of opportunities. Two of five shooting. 19-point lead, Queen again. That is good. A triple for Queen. Oh, Queen all of a sudden, he was in foul trouble early, and he has found a rhythm quickly off the bench. He said, hey, I want to make my mark on this game. And he does just that a couple shots in a row, looking him wide open from the arc. New Mexico State up big on South Florida. 58 to 36 in favor of New Mexico State over South Florida. I'm impressed with this Aggie team right now. They came off of a loss to New Mexico. They had a barn burner yesterday in the opener against Colorado State. And a game that 
Actually, if I were a betting man, I would have said South Florida was the favorite. <laughs> it's been an outstanding game. Buchanan feeds Rice. McCants. Rice looking inside. Aure Kochea had a block, and it's taken away by South Florida. Good defense. Man, holding South Florida the 36 points. Pretty much three quarters of the way through the second half. That is a feat. That is not taken lightly. New Mexico State looking like not only the better team today, but looking like possibly the best team in the tournament. How about Buchanan making that bucket there? And he makes it 60 to 36. 24 point lead for the Aggies of New Mexico State. And I think one of the most impressive things about this for New Mexico State is it's not just one person doing all the scoring. It's a variety of individuals. You've only got two players in double figures. Williams with 13, McCants with 10. And then other than that, you've got Rice, Bobbitt, Queen, Buchanan, Arakoa Choa. And all of them have at least five points to their total. And that is where the difference has been made. That and then on the defensive side of the floor. Aore Korachea. It is pronounced Aore Korachea. And he goes out of the game with five points. Three of six from the foul line. Seven rebounds, one assist, and one steal. Getting a rest here with 436. Rideau at the line. Rideau couldn't get it. Calling a lane violation on Buchanan, I think. Chris Jans asked the near official what number, but the far official said number one as well. Rideau can't get it, and the rebound grabbed by New Mexico State. Buchanan now will walk it into the front court. Bumped in the backcourt, Rideau gets a foul, and he doesn't like the call, but he kind of just stands there like, I didn't do nothing. <laughs> he didn't yell, he didn't even give a bad look, but he goes out of the game, and Rideau with the personal foul, that's his fourth, so he has to sit down. And you know what? Sometimes coaches, you know, that's the coach's rule. You got a guy with four fouls, you take him out of the game. But when you're down like this, I think you leave him in and see yeah. what happens. I see both sides of it. I you, do too. You, you might want to take him out of the game and preserve his time on the floor. And then also, you want to try and have your best players on the floor to at least make some sort of comeback here. Especially when he is your explosive score. That's where I'm coming from. But yeah. I'm not a coach for a reason, so <laughs> we're sitting here right now. Queen along three. That's net again, and he's playing the guitar right now. Wow. Rock on, Queen. Rock on. My goodness. From way downtown. Trevlin Queen went from cold to ten points in a hurry. Four of seven, two of four from three-point range in South Florida answers. They come back to make it 63-38, but... Trevon Queen just outstanding. There's a lob, and they try to get it to Queen, who can jump. And he can throw it down with the best of them, but not on that occasion. And here comes South Florida, Castaneda. Mack for the triple. That banks in. I don't think he cares if he called it. B.J. Mack, a freshman <laughs> out of Charlotte, North Carolina, on the three-pointer. Makes it a little closer, but it's still a big lead as it looks like we're going to have a full timeout here. Chris Jans coaching his team for New Mexico State, and he has had quite some success when it comes to tournament play, Scott. 6-0 record in the WAC Conference Tournament during his time with New Mexico State. He's won two straight tournament titles. And then when it comes to the preseason tournaments or the non-conference tournaments, He's a total of 6-2, and two, knocking on the door of 7-2. and two. So a combined with the win today would be a combined 13-2 and two in any kind of tournament fashion with the Mexico State. That's pretty impressive overall. And that's one of the things that they take pride in at New Mexico State tournament play. It doesn't matter what tournament. They want to be successful in it. They want to be very successful in the WAC. 
But right now, they're successful here in the Cayman Islands Classic. <laughs> About to go to 2 0. Oh. Need to round out the final 308. McCants gives the ball to Buchanan. Here's McCants with six, with five. McCants taking it to the rack. Strong tips it up, tips it again. And this time it's a rebound, and the Aggies just going at it aggressively as that time it was William McNair getting the rebound, and he was fouled. Buchanan inbounds. Taken away, and South Florida now will come down. Castaneda's pass kicked away, and it goes out of bounds off of his own player. And the Aggies will get another opportunity here. Substitute coming in. As into the game for the Aggies, Robert Brown, a redshirt sophomore out of Dallas, Texas, 6'9, 235 out of Advanced Preparatory International High School. Heard the cheers. I knew one of the players that doesn't see a lot of action was coming in. <laughs> That's what you'll see in a game like this, a 22-point lead. Been blown away by what the Aggies have done today in an emphatic win. Going to have a chance to play for a title tomorrow. And he goes up for a bucket and makes it. How about that, Robert Brown? Right off the bench, he gets a couple. Quite 17 minutes in that season opener, and then just eight games last year with New Mexico State. Was 10 of 14 from the floor. So, with that being said, he's, uh, he's had a little bit of success. He knows how to score a little bit. B.J. Mack, speaking of scoring, puts it in to make it 65-43. More subs coming in for New Mexico State with a minute 35 as Tennessee Owens out of Las Cruces, New Mexico. Transfer out of Alabama, Huntsville. Bryce Rewald out of Centennial High School, young man who I got the opportunity to see in high school. 5'11", 165, senior. This is the one team I've seen a lot, New Mexico <laughs> State. Know their broadcaster, Jack Nixon, extremely well. Known him for many, many years, and he's happy right now, broadcasting down at the end of the table. Layup try is off the mark. That layup was missed by DeJour Joseph, 6'6", 205, junior out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, out of South Plains High School. Minute 10 to play. Casting it away outside. Chaplin has a three. Long rebound grabbed by South Florida. Under a minute to play. Here's Castaneda again. Good rebound by Brown. You love when you see play like that. That was actually McNair grabbing a rebound, not Brown, but nonetheless, 24, not 25. But here's Brown right here. But McNair, uh, outstanding force. Brown missed. And here comes South Florida. We're down to 30 seconds. A bench play for New Mexico State. Really the key in this one, showing off the depth, outscoring South Florida for by 30 on the bench-wise for the majority of the game, holding South Florida just to 30 or 43 points, and plus what we'll get here in the final 17 seconds. But there is a ton you can say about this New Mexico State defense and what they're able to bring to the table. Muddit a catch. A freshman, 6'7", 208, redshirt freshman out of Bradenton, Florida. A lot of good basketball talent coming out of Bradenton, Florida. Yeah. 
A lot of talent coming out of Florida in general, yeah, but yeah, Braden in Florida, point. you're right. Tennessee Owens with it. 10 seconds, they get it in the front court. McNair will cradle it to Owens. And this ought to do it. The final seconds counting down, and the ball game is over. An impressive victory for New Mexico State as New Mexico State wins it 65 to 45 as they will win it over the South Florida Bulls and New Mexico State into the championship game. South Florida will go into the consolation finals tomorrow. But what a game for the New Mexico State Aggies. We'll talk to Chris Jans in a second. New Mexico State now four and three. South Florida improves to three and three. And it's been an outstanding day of play here so far. And we will go into the evening session here next. Couple of good games coming up. So we will have Chris Jans coming up here shortly. He's about to come over. You see him in your picture right there. And Kyle Yeoman's about to interview him. Go ahead, Kyle. Coach Jans, overall, just an impressive win for your squad. And the bench really outscored South Florida by 30 on their bench for the majority of the second half. What do you have to say about the bench talent and what you were able to get out of them today? Well, our bench is a little thin for people that follow our program closely. We've got, you know, three guys out. Two will be back in January. But it's the first time all year long where I felt like we had some solid depth. And this is our best basketball of the year. You know, we kept it together. We had some stretches of good basketball yesterday. Um, but we haven't played a full, you know, 35, 40 minutes of decent basketball. And I thought we did that today. It seemed like really from the get-go, your guys were ready to play. Now you're going to have a chance to play for a title come tomorrow. How fun is it knowing that you're the first team locked into a championship bout? Yeah, it feels good. You know, uh, since we've arrived, we've talked about winning championships when they're giving out a trophy. Um, our goal is to bring home the hardware. And, you know, we, we struggled early this season, so our, our mantra was more, let's win the first game. Let's not talk about a championship. Let's win the first game and then get into this position where we can put ourselves in position to win a championship. And that's what we've done. And obviously, it's a quick turnaround situation. we got some guys banged up, but hopefully uh, we'll get some rest here and be ready to go tomorrow. A victorious Chris Jans. Coach, congratulations on the win. Thank you. Back to you, Scott. Thank you very much, Kyle. And they will play the winner of Washington State, Nebraska. That will be tomorrow night, 730 Eastern here on Flow Sports. Coming up, let's look at the schedule really quick here as you look at the big player of the game right there, Sean Williams, as Williams had an outstanding game for New Mexico State as he really heated up from the outside and Outstanding play for Williams, and he was just unstoppable at times. He finishes off with those 13 points. You see the Aggie logo. 